Cartoons, the animated frontier. These are the voyages of the Cellcast podcast. It's continuing mission to explore strange new cartoons, to seek out new animation styles and new creative storytelling methods, to boldly go where so few ever go again. And now, starting this August, a new adventure from the Cellcast podcast. The Cellcast, the animated series. Throughout the month of August, Jacob and Drew will review the animated series Star Trek Lower Decks as it releases on CBS All Access. Join us, because resistance is futile. The Cellcast, the animated series. Every Tuesday on your favorite podcast catcher. New show, same RSS feed. To another episode of the Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who uh, is not in danger of being triple fired, Jacob. Wow. Okay. Uh, why? Thank you. I think <laughs> I uh, said you're not in danger. I, I know. I know. I know. Uh, why? Thank you. I'd like to introduce our co-host, a man who apparently never took the advice of his mother and don't drink something you don't know what's in it. <laughs> Welcome, Drew. I know what's in this can. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try that with caffeine. I was trying to make a noisy sip so you could hear it on the recording, and it. <laughs> Poof, and the carbonation to decided to. <laughs> I am so. I got this close to ruining this microphone. <laughs> oh, that was so good. And ah, all right. <laughs> Poof, he turns into a cat. And? <laughs> I'm half a cat as it is now. Wait a minute, are more you saying I'm Yzma? <laughs> no, you're more Garfield. Oh, I do hate Mondays. <laughs> and lasagna is pretty good. Anyway, how are you doing today, Jacob? Uh, I am doing great. It's been a, It's been a very long day. Has it now? Yes, uh, when you work from 7.45 in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon by yourself, do in one shift, be like, and I get up at 5, and I would get back up until 4, it's kind of difficult. <laughs> it's it's a very long day. <laughs> Has it been? Yes. Well, I can't go to... I can't, I can't, I can't go to <laughs> I'm sitting here going, let's see. <laughs> I had to be at work at 4 this morning. I had no backup. Uh, and I got off, yes, I got off at 3.30, but let's face it, you count the time down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It, 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 comes, it comes down to more more time or something like that. Yes. But anyway, I'm I'm just messing with you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, either way. So, how are you doing? Tired. Oh, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but other than that, I'm doing okay. That's um, good. Yeah. Uh, so, what have you been watching? What have I been watching? Well, uh, we watched a little bit of the 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 goofball in space at our friend Chase's house. Yes, Captain, uh, Tyler. Captain Tyler, which is that, hilarious. If you have never watched that anime, you should find a way to find it. You, I don't know if it's streaming legally anywhere, but I do know you can buy it over at RightStuff.com yeah. for a pretty decent price. Yeah, actually. So yeah, do that. Yeah, uh, I think of more. I've really ever watched really like anime, anime or like anime animation wise. Mm -hmm. uh, I did watch one of my favorite films of all time called Frequency. Came out in two thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, it stars uh, Jim Caviezel from The Passion of the Christ and uh, Dennis Quaid from Dennis Quaid. The man, the man is just a <laughs> talent. Apparently, young. the only thing Dennis Quaid has done of any importance is be himself. <laughs> Oh, That's let's what see. It in the like. in, inner space. Uh, uh, what is that? Down the Phoenix. Uh, like a ton of films. We like look up his uh, uh, filmography. The man has done a ton of ton metric ton of stuff, and uh, has the clout to do it. And plus, I'm kind of relate. I'm semi related to him in a way, not really, but it's it's an interesting connection. Let's say that. 
in similar way to I am somewhat related to John Glenn? Yeah, in a way. If you go back far enough and then come back up the other well, side? Well, not really, because my aunt married uh, Dennis Quaid's cousin. So not related. Not You're related, in, but there's in, connection. But in law. Yeah, in law, there's 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 connection. Point. All right. So it's 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 very interest. It's a very interesting connection. It's like okay, that's kind of cool. All right. Uh, other than that, I really haven't watched much of anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I noticed you've been watching quite a bit. Bunch of you know Gojira stuff. Well, I watched one. Okay. Of those. Uh, I this afternoon watched uh, Mosura versus Gojira, which in English is. Mothra versus Godzilla. Ah, when did that movie come out? 64. Oh, okay. So it's a bit old. In fact, I realized while I was watching this that, you know how we always claim that Marvel was, uh, did such a, was so, so groundbreaking in creating the cinematic universe? Yeah. You realize that Godzilla did it 50 years ago. That is true. Because half their stuff is connected. It's loosely connected and let's face it, some of the, uh, Continuity is a little sketchy, at best. That that happens. But I mean, you can literally go from Godzilla, the original Godzilla, to uh, I can't remember what the name of the second one is, to King Kong versus Godzilla, to God to Mothra, to Mothra versus Godzilla. Yeah. To I think the next one on my list is uh, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, the three or the, the three headed monster, something like that. The gold he fights the gold dragon. Yeah, uh, I can't remember the exact name of that movie because I haven't looked at it yet. But I mean, uh, it is interesting that you can go all the way through here and it actually has some continuity. It's not a lot, and right. it's, it doesn't quite match up. Okay, but it does have at least at least they are trying. Okay. Somewhat, even if they really couldn't. Um, there is one other thing that we watched that you have not mentioned. Okay. Say it. You don't remember? I'm drawing a blink at the second. I'll give you a hint. Saturday night, with the singles group, at Times Square. Thank you. I, I didn't forget the <laughs> film. It just went <laughs> blank. It, it, you just completely... It just Admittedly... It, it, I understand. It, it crossed over and went the other direction. <laughs> right. Uh, the the movie he's referring to is uh, My Brother's Crossing. Uh, it's a Christian film that just came out mm-hmm. recently. And uh, it has a good story. Yeah, it's got a good meat But it's bone not to it. told very no, well. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, um, I know, quote unquote, Christian movies have a uh, a reputation for being cheesy and poorly made right uh those at least looked like they were competently shot even mm-hmm. if they did not you know break the mold or right feel like they're dramatized sermons this one on the other hand felt like it was intended to be the drama scenes of a documentary and it was supposed to be interspersed with interviews but they cut all the interviews out it's possibly to get it down to what was it two hours yeah it's about a two hour film and it felt like we passed the climax twice oh yeah before we got to the end of the movie yeah this, this movie went longer than it should have let's and say there, that. there were very there were points of time thinking oh that's the big event this thing's based around okay I assume the credits are coming up oh this movie's still going and it's still going mm. oh they're actually talking about the foundation of this organization okay mm. that's cool it's still going mm. and it's still going how long is this thing? We've only been here an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this feels like we've been here for three. <laughs> indeed. Um, indeed, it did. I, I said something slightly controversial that night that uh, this might be the room of Christian movies. Oh, yeah. Ouch. I don't know if I completely agree with wow. that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and at this point, but at the same time. There is a reason it came. That thought came to mind. So yeah, agreed. Now, granted, be like it was the family behind this. It's based on a true story. Mm-hmm. The family who yep. was involved in this actually made the film, right? Or isn't like heavily involved. And with the film. it feels like nearly everyone involved, from the actors to the producer to the director to the editor to pretty much 
anything involved with physical with stuff you see on screen. Right. It felt like it must have been all of their first movies. Yeah. In many ways. That's the nicest way I can go about that. Audio design was not bad, though. No, the audio wasn't Except bad. Except for the Whoa. opening uh, oh, logo gosh. in which the sound blew, was so loud, I'm surprised you couldn't yeah. hear it. You could have heard it over King Kong if it was playing next door. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was It was that they deafening. Go, what is going on next door? That they're, they're, uh, they're, they're uh, overpowering King Kong. Yeah, this is nuts. Have I, this I'm talking about Kong Skull Island because that movie was loud. That was loud. It's probably one of the reasons I didn't like it. <laughs> More on that but, in the movie but, of the week podcast. Yeah, when we get there. When we get, get there. there. <laughs> um, yeah. Would I rec- would I re- would I recommend this film? No. <laughs> I kind of. There are better Christian movies. There are out there. I don't say this one is horrible, but it's no. like. Uh, it feels like I'm watching a high schooler's uh, s- s- school project. Right. It's really kind of how it feels. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen college projects that were just uh, yeah, incredible. Now, there again, the the heart and the meat of this movie is very, is yeah, has a, a good, solid... It's a good story, and it's almost worth watching for that. Right. But I think you would get more enjoyment out of reading an article about the founding of the organization that than watching true. the movie. Or go to YouTube and look up the actual event. Yes. And be like, they have interviews with the actual people. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I know uh, a friend of ours, Wendy, uh, talked about the film, talked about leading up to going to watch the film. She had watched things on YouTube about it. And uh, yeah, you can go and look up information about it. It's an actual event that happened. And uh, I would probably recommend that uh, if. Now, granted, I gu- I guarantee there there are a lot of people who absolutely hate Christian films, and this will not improve your uh, th- thoughts on will them at not all. will not. Uh, but yeah, just it's there again at its heart, it was a good story. Mm-hmm. Execution wise, not so much. Right. Anyway, that I think is pretty much all we've watched. Pretty much. So, uh, what do we have in the news? Hmm. Well. Non-podcast news, anyway. Yeah, non-podcast news. So, interesting fact. So, normally I go to um, animated... What? (laughs) I had flashbacks to... what. By the time this will come out, the last episode we recorded on uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. Fun fact! I'm going to kill you! That (laughs) fact was not fun! (laughs) I'm sorry. That's where my brain went! All right, so kind of a plug-in for that. If you if you like your co- the content we're doing here, uh, we do a animated series mm-hmm. where we're currently currently doing Star Trek Lower Decks, which is on CBS All Access. Yes. So, go ahead. Well, it's soon the, the CBS All Access is soon to be renamed, I think, to the Paramount Network or something similar to that. Either now that way, Paramount owns CBS again. Oi. Either way, yeah. So go go check us out. Go check those episodes out. Uh, they're primarily during the week. They're primarily yes. during the week. And um, uh, the week prior to the to this episode, we actually are releasing two episodes to get us caught back up. Yeah. But yeah, it's in the same feed as the the, the regular podcast. You mm-hmm. don't have to go looking elsewhere. So check it out there. Yeah. All right. So as I was saying before, sorry, didn't mean uh, to interrupt. No, you're good. Uh, the fact that normally I have to go to uh, www.animatedmagazine.com for my news no- most of the time. Mm-hmm. Well, I noticed like all the big news feeds are on our page or on our, our Facebook page. Like every one of the big ones that came out are on there. Oh. So I, I was very, I was like, okay. So we're caught up. So we're basically caught up with the news right now. <laughs> so if you, if... So I will basically give you a, a kind of a laid out or a layout of the of the news, what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don Bluth of uh, Secrets of Nim, mm-hmm. All Dogs Go to Heaven, um, American Tell, uh, Anastasia, Titan AE, movies like that. Five Will Goes West. He d- technically didn't do that one. That's true. He never did a sequel. Which, which means technically we can't put that in a Don Bluth month. 
No, we can't. Good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Either way. We'll bring uh, that up. We'll get there when we get, get there. there. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, we'll get around to that one. That was a really good movie. Um, Duh. All right. Da -da -da. <laughs> all right. So, Don Bluth has recently come out with, he is uh, starting a new studio. Mm hmm Then, this man is well known for starting studios and studios breaking down and yes. breaking up new studios. Well, he is recently. He, is he still trying to do the Dragon's Lair movie? Not that I know of. Okay. Maybe. That's sad. But anyway. Well, well what he is currently doing, because he, uh, Don Bluth has been known for his 2D animation. Mm -hmm. He loves 2D animation. So he wants to, in a way, uh, make, bring back the renaissance of the 2D uh, animation to bring it back into uh, current. The, yes. the current. The current Admittedly, generation. Admittedly, we do have a uh, swarm of 3D right now and it would be nice to bring 2d back all right and so apparently the new don bluth studios they are working on uh what they're calling bluth fables which apparently is a bunch of fables don bluth wrote himself and is he's narrating it and they're animating over that okay as far as i understand so we don't have a date on which so are they like shorts they're or? shorts okay they're shorts it, it's kind of it's coming back in a smaller way now he may eventually go back to do doing uh dragon's lair could be that he's trying to get he's doing the shorts to get uh people to look at his at this new thing and he'll right. use whatever publicity he can get from that to finish dra the dragon's lair movie right that would be the hope that would be the hope so you know uh, whenever Don Bluth gets around to getting this done, it'd be like it'd be great to uh, actually to see this and probably review it mm -hmm. at some point, and maybe hope, pray, what have you. Maybe we can get an interview with Don Bluth. <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. That would be nice. Possibly. Don't hold your breath. Yeah, don't hold your <laughs> breath. But that'd be kind of cool. Either way, uh, second bit of news: uh, apparently, a show you loved as a kid is coming back. <laughs> Indeed, that is. You, is it? You, um, I was. I was. I, I nearly made the wrong reference. <laughs> I was about to ask if it was Tiny Toonie and all of. No, Looney, no, but no, that's no, no, another no. Show. That, That's another show. That's a different show. No, uh, so we're, we're talking some, about Animaniacs. We're talking about Animaniacs. It's coming, uh, coming back. Uh, if you go to our our Facebook page, mm -hmm. they just released a uh, a teaser trailer to it, yes. or sneak peek to it, and uh, the animation looks beautiful. Be mm -hmm. like, there again, this show was, was in nineteen ninety what? Do you remember? Uh, ninety two, ninety three. Yeah, ninety three, ninety four. It was ninety three. It's something like that. Uh, there again, kind of a tie in. Uh, if you want to watch us do a review over at Animaniacs movie Wacko's Wish. Uh, you can go and check down to the uh, back. Yeah, check back near the beginning. Uh, I think back in January. Yeah, February, January no, twenty twenty. February. It's February. It's February. Okay. January was Don Bluth month. That's right. And it was either the first or second one after uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Right. Yeah. So go check that out. We did a review of that movie, and I was I was very surprised by that film. I was very surprised because I did not like. Animaniacs I was, as a kid. I, I was expecting you to hate that one, and I was going to have to defend, and you surprised me. Right. But that movie is a classic, right. in my opinion. Right. And the next one, because I'm actually on our, our our Facebook page, actually looking this up. This this is a, this is a good point. Kind of a kind of something I wanted to do real fast. Kind of like a, a another podcast I love to death. They kind of do like a like a couch a sit, a sit down couch set setting for one moment. Uh, apparently, people are if, in, we, if we need the couch, it's over here. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. So th good because I don't this, want to move the microphone. This is more this is more discussion. This is more discussion. So when it comes to how COVID has affected theaters. And so there is this rumor going around that ever since Soul, which is part of Pixar, a Dis Pixar Disney film, mm -hmm. there is the the notion going around that it's not going to go to theaters; it's simply going to go to Disney Plus. A lot of people are saying that because of Mulan did the premiere access right thing, and one of the things Disney said when they announced that is they did not anticipate keyword there anticipate this being done for any other movie. It was only for 
this one because they did not feel they could get it out in a timely manner and it still be in theaters. Right. From just our situation, yeah. I disagree with that so, assessment. Okay. But that's neither here nor there. Right. Uh, Soul doing that, I would be disappointed. But let's face it, the people making these decisions are in one of the hardest hit states of co- with COVID yeah. right now. They are... To them, it's actually a lot worse than it's than it seems to us. Agreed. I mean, admittedly, we're pretty, with the exception of the movie theater still being closed and the fact that uh, our church service is still split. For the most part, we're back to normal. Yeah, for the most where part. We're at. For the most part. Um, I know that's not true everywhere. Right. But uh, I would, well, I would, I always hate to see them skip the theater, and I've been anno- annoyed with the because I'm afraid. What if not going to the theater becomes the norm. Yeah. I know for a lot of people, um, going to the theater is expensive and this would be cheaper. And mm-hmm. plus, uh, much like with Mulan, once you purchase the, if you purchase the premier access, you have access. Mm-hmm. You don't have a limited number of viewings. You have it period. Mm-hmm. So it's a and it's and it's essentially the same price as going to the store and buying a 4K Blu-ray of it and you're getting it in 4K. Yeah. So uh, I mean it's not it's not going to be as good a quality as a 4K Blu-ray would be because uh physical media always gets you a better image Agreed. than streaming does. Anyway, I'm kind of rattling a little there. Um I'd hate to see it happen. I understand why it might and how it would affect things. I just wish we could be back to normal by now because in many ways it feels like we are at least here where we are. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, my thought would be that if Disney does do, if they do it, split it. Because there was the fear that, oh, ever since uh, Tenet didn't do well in mm-hmm. theaters. Apparently. Apparently. They've not a- announced... Um, how, how it's doing. Yeah, box office right now. They won't give us the box office, but apparently it must be doing bad because Warner Brothers has already delayed Wonder Woman 84. Oh, yeah. So if they're delaying that, then that must mean Tenet did not do well. And, right. And they're afraid it's not going to be doing well again until maybe next year. That could be a possibility. Because they've, put, they've pretty much put that off till December. So yeah. So my thought would be, at least that's my understanding. I, yeah. Admittedly, news right now is so strange. I can't even guarantee you what I just told you was correct. Right. With this stuff. Yeah. My my opinion on that would be, if they do if they do put, uh, soul on Premier Access, mm-hmm. put it in theaters also. Yeah. Be like for the for theaters the, that are open. Yeah. For those for those families who want to go out and w- mm-hmm. go to a theater or those who feel more comfortable staying home right can stay home do the best of both worlds yeah exactly i can't imagine it costs you any different oh i yeah. could be wrong but i just can't Im- i just can't imagine it's that much of a deal plus you have to remember when disney uh decided to not put mulan in theaters mm-hmm they pretty much said we're not going to put this up for the Academy Awards at all because mm. they can't. Yeah, that's just it's, sad. The Academy Awards still require you to go to theaters. Yeah, which is sad. That was a good movie. Such yeah. a good movie. Go check uh, out, go, go check out our movie of the week podcast at, when it comes out. I don't yeah. think it's out yet. Yeah, um, I think it's coming out tomorrow. As right. of this recording. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. My th- my my general thought is and, I, and that's the put, other thing. Put them both. Since because of the way Disney works, mm-hmm. I can't imagine they would keep it keep a movie keep an animated movie such as Pixar out of the running for an Oscar oh, of yeah. any sort oh yeah so it will still probably release even if it's got a limited run in my mind it's just go ahead and release it to any theater that happens to be open right people will go to it there will be people who will go to because some of us are not as scared as some others. Yeah. And now, now granted, be like, there are people who are going to be more concerned with COVID. And that's fine. And be like, if, if you want to stay home, stay home. That's be yeah. like, be safe for you and be safe for others. Uh, but if you want to go to the theater, go to the theater. Yeah. We should be. I, 
I honestly think we should be allowed to go to the theater if it's available to. Because let's exactly. face it, I've watched four movies in theater since uh, in the last month. Okay. I am not sick. So, I say we do it. Okay. All right. So, I just thought I would bring that up. Yeah. Kind of like a quick discussion. Mm-hmm. Some Something different. What, what are our opinions on something that's going on right now? Yeah. Bear in mind, this is our opinions. We're just pe- loud mouths who speak on, talk on the internet. We're no exactly. different. The only difference between us and you is the fact that we've got a, we've got microphones and a mixer board. Yeah. And you, and a webcam. And for some reason you listen to us or watch us on Facebook. Exactly. So we're, we're just two idiots on the internet. If, if you disagree with us, that's fine. Yeah. We're not going to get mad. You want to yell at us? That's fine. We can ignore you there too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> there, there, there's there's always room for conversation. Yes. If you feel like you need to email yell at us, just go ahead and email us at the Cellcast Podcast at gmail dot com, and uh, we'll decide if we're going to bother reading that online <laughs> later. I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> that because because it's, it's like, what would we say that we haven't already said? Right. Is really my thought there. Right. Though what what I would like but to so, do. So yeah, if you do want to email us at the Cellcast Podcast exactly. gmail dot com, we will. We are welcome for any fan interaction. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, if if you want to go to the Facebook page and start a discussion there, that'd be mm-hmm. great. You know, start a discussion, get people involved. It would be fantastic. Agree, disagree with it. Yes. Just be like, tell us a- how stupid we are, or that too, on any topic. Yeah. You know, get 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 the conversation started. That's that's what I would like to hear and see. Yeah. Either either way. So speaking that- of community. Okay. We're moving into some podcast news. Okay. We are now a part of the Christian Geek Central podcast. Or it's not podcast network. It's just a network. Yeah. Uh, so you can, if you uh, go to their website at christiangeekcentral.com, uh, you can check out some other great websites. I'll be talking about more of that later in the intermission, but yeah. All right. So that's all I have in the news. All righty. Shall we get into our spoiler-free section? I agree. On Spies in Disguise. Yeah, let's do that. Neither one of us saw this movie when it released. No! (laughs) No, 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 no. (laughs) Uh, I don't think that was really anything. We we didn't go out of our way to say we wouldn't go to this movie. Right. I think it just, we just didn't. So both of our viewings were the Blu-ray on Mm -hmm. our televisions. Yes. Two weeks ago. Pretty much. (laughs) Or... Two to three weeks ago. Two to three weeks ago. Yeah. And the reason for the delay for this was, Mer- well, you were going through caffeine withdrawals. Yeah. So that's why I went ahead and put up the uh, Looney virus. Yeah. And then because of timing, we had to do the Mulan episode immediately after that. Yeah. So that's the reason for the delay. Um, but at the same time, thoughts on this movie. Um, it's not bad. No. It sounds like a horrible way to start the review. But uh, <laughs> go for it. Um I've never been much of a fan of Blue Sky uh animation. I can count on one hand the movies of theirs I've liked. Okay. That being uh the first Ice Age and uh the Peanuts movie. Mm-hmm. Those are the only other two I okay. liked. That the Peanuts movie I haven't seen yet, I need to watch that. It's surprisingly good. Hmm. But at the same time, it's because it's Peanuts. They yeah. are very close to the source material. Yeah, it's it's just so, an iconic franchise. Yeah. It's hard to mess it up. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the Blue Sky stuff I'd seen before this. Uh, this this was an interest... When, I, when we were first were talking about this, I feel it was over a year ago. It was. Were we talking about this last fall when we were... Cause, when uh, we did that first upcoming movies of 2019. Yeah, we did. We actually did discuss it. I, I thought so. So, yeah, we've been... When we first when I first heard about it during that discussion, I mm-hmm. thought, oh, this is a cool idea for a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I found out who was making it, and I was like, oh. <laughs> it had promise. <laughs> yeah. And it's just because I don't hold a very high opinion of Blue Sky. Um, it's nothing against them. It's just, for the most part... Most of the movies I've seen that they have made, I've just not been impressed with. They seem to take safe routes right? when it comes to stuff. And kind of that's what's going on here, but at the same time, no. Uh, I actually enjoyed the film, but I did not, I would not consider it 
anywhere in my anywhere near the top of any list. It was an, it wasn't horrendous, but I and I did enjoy it. It's just not it's not the best thing that's came out in the last couple of years. So okay. yeah, that's my thoughts. Okay. Um uh, like yourself, um um I enjoyed the film to an extent. Uh there were a little like anime not animation problem but more design wise mm-hmm. of this movie with, you know, being an artist and all that and designer. Uh, I'm sure we won't get into that. No, in, in, in we our won't. Dislikes. No, not at all. Uh, the it's a good movie, but there's problems with it. Mm-hmm. There's pro there's problem with it. And uh, is it watchable? Is it recommended? Like I've, I've heard a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, we really enjoyed it." You know, talking, you know, watching yeah. it with their kids. Like, yeah, totally get that. And this is very much a kids movie. It's so much a kids movie, right? And you know that's. There again, we we watch animated movies and review them, <laughs> right? So, yeah. So there again, we're kind of like two big kids. So there again, we have more critical review of films than. Well, we've because, watched so much of this, we can't help but form exactly formed opinions. Exactly. So yeah. exactly there there again, be like 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 we was trying to say, be like this are, these are our opinions. Yes. So if you have another opinion about it, comment comment down below and you know start a conversation about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, it's 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 a uh, it's a good it's, execution of a yeah. film. There's just little things here and there was just meh. there's a couple of strange story beats. Yeah, there that are. we'll get into. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much going to cover us for spoiler free. Uh, so yeah, I guess join us on the other side as we'll get into our uh, spoiler filled section on the movie Spies in Disguise. Yep. Ray. If we're wrong, we're okay. Miss Progress is a part of Christian Reek Central Network. Yeah. Rock, rock. Hey, hey, Scoop, what are you doing, man? I don't know. I'm supposed to be reading an ad. <laughs> All right, hold on. Give me, give me it. Okay. <laughs> All right. This podcast is part of the Christian Geek Central Network at ChristianGeekCentral.com. There, you can find a collection of blogs and podcasts working together to bring you some of the best content on the web for Christian geeks, such as the Christian Geek Central Podcast. The flagship of the Christian Geek Central Network, the CGC Podcast, previously known as the Spirit Played Underground Podcast, is a weekly 30 to 60 minute biblical examination and celebration of geek entertainment and passions. It features reviews, interviews, and conversations about movies, tabletop games, video games, books, comics, TV shows, and a widening variety of other entertainment. Also included is a chapter-by-chapter examination of the Bible and its specific application for geeks. Hosted by Peter Franson of the Spirit Blade Productions, the show also features listener-submitted content and segments created by other members of the CGC Network. The following is a spoiler-filled review for the movie Spies in Disguise. Listener discretion is advised. Spies in Disguise was directed by Nick Bruno and Troy Quan, or is it Quain? I'm not sure. Uh, this was Nick Bruno's first uh, movie to direct. And uh, Troy uh, previously had done The Smurfs, A Christmas Carol. Hmm. I did not know The Smurfs had A Christmas Carol. Me either. I'm guessing um, Gargamel had to be the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Possibly. Anyway, uh, it was written by uh, Cindy Davis, who wrote the uh, English versions of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind and Whispers of the Heart and The Cat Returns. One of those movies we have reviewed already. Uh, Brad Copeland was also a writer. He also wrote Ferdinand and Yogi Bear. And uh, Lloyd Taylor wrote additional story material for The Wild, the Disney one. The Wild. Yes. Came out around the same time as uh, Madagascar, but got severely less attention. That's right. Okay. Gotcha. It was based on an animated short film named Pigeon Impossible, which was made by Lucas Martel. 
The uh, music was done by Theodore Shapiro, who also did the music for Tropic Thunder. Hmm. Okay. Cast includes Rachel Brosnahan, who played Wendy, which is Walter's mother. In the television Amazon show uh, The Marvelous Miss Maisel, she plays Miriam Maisel. Okay. The main character. Gotcha. Uh, Jarrett Bruno plays young Walter and a pigeon voice, and this was his first movie. Hmm. Uh, Claire Crosby plays Unity, the voice of the little mascot character of the unicorn on the t-shirt. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, uh, and apparently an upcoming Anastasia movie, she played an orphan girl. Okay. I think Anastasia. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. Will Smith plays Lance Sterling. Mm-hmm. He was, of course, the uh, genie in the live action uh, Aladdin. Uh, Agent J in Men in Black, mm-hmm. and was, of course, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Mm-hmm. Reba McIntyre plays uh, Joyless, the chief of the industry, yes. of, the, of the spy agency. Uh-huh. She's, of course, a very famous country music singer. Mm-hmm. In the uh, sitcom Reba, she plays Re- the main character, Reba Hart. She does. And uh, do you remember the movie Tremors? Oh, absolutely, yes. She played Heather Gummer. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Love that movie. Masi Oka plays Kimura. He played uh, Hiro Nakamura in Heroes, and Bruce in Get Smart. Mm-hmm. Ben Mendelsohn plays Killian. He was Orson Krennic in Rogue One. Okay. And Sorrento in Ready Player One. Okay, a lot of ones there. A lot of ones. Uh, Carla Jimenez played Geraldine. And in the movie Nacho Libre, uh, she played Ken Bibia. I'm not even sure who the char- that character is off the top of my head. My apologies. Mm. Uh, Tawny Newsom plays uh, agency employee number one. And uh, she is uh, she plays Ensign Beckett Mariner on Star Trek Lower Decks. Okay. Interesting. Tom Holland plays Walter. Mm-hmm. He is, of course, Peter Parker and Spider-Man in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yep. Rashida Jones plays Marcy, and in, she plays Ann Perkins in Parks and Rec. Karen Gillan played Eyes. She was Amy Pond in uh, the Eleventh Doctor's mm-hmm. uh, run of Doctor Who. Oh yeah, and uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, she plays Nebula. Uh huh. DJ Khalid played Ears. He is, of course, a DJ, and he's been in many music videos. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lance's car was played by Kimberly Brooks. And in Voltron Legendary Defender, she played Allura. Oh, okay. Do you notice something missing from my list? No. What is it? I have not mentioned a uh, Kingdom Hearts reference. No, you haven't. This is shocking. It is shocking. So uh, back up there in the music section, uh, I failed to mention Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez. Ah, from Frozen. Yes. Their two songs, uh, Do You Want to Build a Snowman and uh, yeah. Let It Go, mm-hmm. appear in their entirety in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. Just. He was additional voices in Kingdom Hearts 3, but in uh, Spies in Disguise, he was the uh, singer of the uh, themes, one of the singers in the, th- in the opening theme song. Oh, okay. Interesting. He was also apparently in Nightmare Before Christmas. Hmm. As some background characters. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah. Uh, also, just as a quick thing, he was apparently a singer in Frozen 2 also, but that's besides the point. Mm. Anyway. A lot of Frozen connections. Yes. Let's let's heat things up then and get yeah. back to where I was. Sometimes you just can't hold it back anymore. Precisely. <laughs> Actually, that is the end of my list. So, what do we got in... S- uh, info and stuff. Info and stuff. All right. Let Box get the, office and stuff. Let, let me get the info and stuff. All right. So, in info and stuff, uh, on IMDb, it has a 6.8 out of 10. On Rotten Tomatoes, a 75%. And on Audience, it's a 92%. Mm-hmm. So, apparently, the audience liked it better. Yeah. All right. So, streaming-wise, you can... If you want to stream it anywhere, you can find it primarily on HBO Max, mm-hmm. which is they still have the rights based. to it. Yeah, which is weird because now it's owned by Disney. Well, uh, these rights were probably sold 
before the Disney buyout occurred. That is true. That's what I thought. And because there's a lot of stuff that's kind of held up strange that way. True. Just stranger things here and there. That's Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you want to also stream this uh, on your phone, tablet, device, what have you, uh, you can on a busy on video, video, V U D U. Voodoo. Voodoo. Thank you. On Voodoo, you can you can check it out for five dollars and ninety cents, and on YouTube for nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Twenty bucks on YouTube? Yeah, apparently. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous for any movie. <laughs> Agreed. And it's you know only for like what forty eight hours, maybe Probably. less. Probably. No, it's for 24 hours. It's 40. That's, like, that's the rental fee is 20 bucks? That's the rental fee. That's stupid. Yeah. Do not rent anything for 20 bucks. <laughs> no. That's goodness. purchase price. I'm yeah. sorry. No. All right. So uh, you can purchase it, obviously, on Amazon. Uh, and you can probably go buy it at any, like, Walmart, Target, mm-hmm. what have you. Or go to... Or um, be like us and get it through Disney Movie Club. Thank you. <laughs> With Ferdinand. With Ferdinand, yeah. Which now I have three copies of. (laughs) So Disney Movie Club has guaranteed you three copies of that while they wanted to keep giving me Incredibles 2. (laughs) Right. Eventually we'll have to give some of those movies away. Yes. Eventually. All right. So production companies. All right. Apparently there's a few of them. No, really? Yeah, you think? (laughs) All right, so obviously Blue Sky Studios, which is known for the Ice Age films mm-hmm. and uh, several other films that are good, bad, which whatever your opinion is and on ugly. it, and ugly, yeah, very in good. some cases, yeah. All right, actually, so, I don't know, I, I don't know what movie I'm thinking of that's ugly, so let's move on. All right, either way, uh, wait, did they do Ugly Dolls? I think they did actually. Okay, so that's what I meant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 20th Century Animation now, uh, now. 20th century animation mm-hmm. uh also known you know for producing uh certain films like oh i don't know anastasia back eight. in the day back in the day not true producing them anyway they didn't producing. actually uh they weren't the actual animators on the films yeah that's for the most part yeah and the for only the reason blue sky is Got, was animated by them is because they're the actual animation studio that, that happens is true. to be owned by 20th Century Animation. Yeah, that's true. Now owned by Disney. Yes. Uh, and also another uh, Sheridan, I believe it's pronounced. Sheridan? Yeah, Sheridan. Sheridan? Yeah, Sheridan. Sheridan and Sheridan. Uh, if I if I mispronounce something, that's what I do. I mispronounce things all the time. So excuse me. Uh, Sheridan Entertainment. I'm not exactly sure what they've done, but apparently they backed the film. Probably just a producer. Probably. Uh, Production it was, company, I mean. That is true. Uh, it was distributed by 20th Century Fox, now 20th Century Studios. Uh, it was released on no- December 4th, 2019. Uh, it was in the... It was originally released in, two, in uh, on the 9th, and then the U.S. It was released the 25th on Christmas in the U.S., which I've never understood. Why would you release a movie on you know Christmas? I, I know a lot of people go and there watch. There are movies. people who do go and watch movies on Christmas right. Day. Right. Plus, uh, Christmas is usually a hot, a big weekend. So if you have to remember, they don't the, the box office does not just measure the day it comes out. It measures the weekend right. it comes out. So it comes out Christmas Day. Technically, it might have come out on Christmas Eve, the way they do these schedules now. Right. Plus, you would have had... It wasn't Christmas on a Thursday last year. I think Most so. Most places would have had given, given you Friday for an extended weekend, plus Saturday, plus Sunday. It's a weekend where there's people out and about needing oh, to yeah. do stuff. That makes sense. And bored kids needing to be entertained. Right. I can say that for this movie. I can't tell you why so many other movies get released on Christmas Day unless they are uh, Oscar bait. Yeah, exactly. Those are released because they have to have it out before before New Year's. Right. And that's usually the very last weekend they can get it out. All right. So thank you for that information. I knew that. Just yeah. good uh, reminder. All right. So budget-wise, uh, it had an estimated budget of $100 million. Fairly big budget. Mm-hmm. All right. So its opening U.S. weekend was 
$13.3 million. Yeah. All right, it's U.S. gross. Ouch. $66.7 million. That's domestic. Mm. Wow. This did not do well. No, it did not. Uh, it's worldwide gross was $171.6 million. It didn't even, I'd be like it made its mm-hmm. budget back, but did not be like its uh, advertising budget. Nope. Which brings me to the other reason I can think of why you release at Christmas. Mm-hmm. It's the only weekend they thought it could make money. <laughs> That's a good point. Because that is the weirdness about this movie. Mm-hmm. Before we get into the actual review is this plus many of the other movies that were in production by 20th Century Fox. Mm-hmm. When the Disney the Disney buyout completed. Yeah. Uh, many of them were in various stages of completion. Mm-hmm. Some of them were delayed to give time. Some were kind of pushed out, which I kind of get the feeling this one was kind of pushed out a little. Some were ready to be released, and it just happened to fit the schedule. Right. Keep So, yeah, I mean, Fox, for the past year or two prior to this, was kind of in a state of limbo because... Murdoch was trying to sell them mm-hmm. and they did not know where they were going. Right. So, and you, and the other thing is, is, uh, if you remember right before, uh, this movie came out, like early December, we were talking about it yes. and we mentioned how weird it was to see spies in disguise being advertised on Disney's Twitter account that because is... of how the switchover went. Yeah, that's true. A lot. Of, I would assume that for this movie in particular, I can't speak for any of the others. Right. That the normal marketing plan that Blue Sky would have gotten, like you got for every other movie they've probably done, they probably did not have the budget under 20th Century Fox, and Disney did not have time to, to do figure out how to do a real promotion. Yeah. For this. So they kind of just went ahead and stuck in a spot where they thought it could at least make some money and not be competing against anything else. Because I'm trying to think, wasn't there, what other animated movie was out at that time? Um, I don't think it was. I don't think that, I think the, the last big one was, was uh, not Spider-Verse, because that was the year before. Yeah, Spider-Verse. Um, there, there, were, there were other several big hitters. Frozen. Frozen 2? Frozen 2 was in November. That's right. It was still been in it theaters. It was still been in theaters at that time. And it was slamming yeah, in theaters. Yeah, I don't think... DreamWorks was... DreamWorks' is one wasn't... Was, did not have anything. Right. Uh, Lego Mo- Lego didn't have it. I don't like it. Warner Brothers really didn't have anything. Right. So, yeah, it was... That was just a spot where it could compete by itself. So they were going to try and get anything they could get. And they were still going to lose to Frozen 2. <laughs> Because Pixar's next one was Onward, and that was in March. Yeah. Which was or lot, late February. Yeah, it was late February, because that was the last movie we saw in theaters before yeah. the shutdown. Exactly. Good movie, by the way. Yes, very good we movie. We are going to have to do a full review on we that will. one soon. We will. Um, after Probably after uh, our four months, the th- our four months of themes. Oh, that is true. Anyway. Either way. Getting into the summary. Lance Sterling, a cocky secret agent of HTUV, which stands for Honor, Trust, Unity, and Valor, is sent to recover an attack drone from a Japanese arms dealer, Katsu Kimura, in Japan. As soon as the buyer, cybernetically enhanced terrorist Killian, arrives, Sterling breaks in against the orders of HTUV director Joy Jenkins, which I thought was Joy Less from everything I was reading, but anyway, defeats Kimura and his gang and manages to escape with the briefcase containing the drone. Sterling returns to HTUV headquarters to confront Walter Beckett, a socially inept MIT graduate and outcast young scientist, for equipping non-lethal weapons into his suit. Walter tries to convince Sterling that there is a more peaceful way to save the world, but Sterling fires him before he can explain his latest invention, biodynamic concealment. Sterling discovers the briefcase to be empty and is confronted by Marcy Capel, a security forces agent who reveals footage of Sterling, actually Killian in a holographic disguise, leaving with the drone, labeling him as a traitor. Sterling escapes the HTUV and escapes to track down Walter to help him disappear. Meanwhile, Killian breaks into the HTUV weapons facility. While searching Walter's home for his invention, Sterling unknowingly ingests the concoction and transforms 
into a pigeon before Walter can start making an antidote, antidote to change him back. Marcy and other HTUV agents chase the duo through the city, but they escape in Sterling's spy car. The two track down Kimura to a resort in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. There, they learn of Killian's whereabouts in Venice, Italy, before Marcy and the HTUV can capture them again. On the way to Venice, Walter attempts to make the antidote, but fails. Arriving in Venice, Walter is confronted by the HTUV, who are unaware of Sterling's condition, revealing that she knows about Wendy, Walter's mother, who was a police officer who died on duty. Marcy tries to convince him to ter- help turn Sterling in, but Walter refuses. Suddenly, a drone distracts the HTUV and allows Walter and Sterling to escape. The two discover the drone carrying the HTUV agent database, and Walter manages to retrieve it. However, Killian shows up, taking the database, and prepares to kill Walter. With help from hundreds of pigeons in the surrounding area, they distract Killian and flee. Disguised as Sterling once more, Killian escapes the HTUV, shaking Marcy's suspicions of Sterling upon her seeing him with a robot hand. Seeing him with a robot hand. Whilst underwater in a submarine, Walter reveals he planted a tracking device on Killian and locates him at the weapons facility. Walter manages to perfect the antidote and successfully turns Sterling human again. Reaching Killian's hideout, Sterling is concerned about Walter's safety and sends him away in the submarine. Once inside, Sterling confronts Killian but is defeated and captured as Killian reveals he has mass-produced hundreds of drones to target everyone at the agency using the database as revenge for killing his crew in a past mission led by Sterling. Noticing Walter returning in the submarine, Killian destroys it. Unbeknownst to them, Walter survives with the help of one of his inventions, the inflatable hug. Once Walter frees Sterling, the two escape and contact Marcy for support as the drones approach HTUV headquarters in Washington, D.C. Walter attempts to hack into Killian's bionic arm, but when Killian realizes this, he tries to flee via air with a drone, but Walter catches up. Walter risks his life by trapping Killian in the inflatable hug and deactivates the villain's arm as Walter himself falls. But Sterling, who has turned himself back into a pigeon, successfully flies for the first time and carries him to safety with help from other pigeons while Killian is found and arrested. Despite saving the world, Sterling, back in his human form, and Walter are fired for disobedience. However, they are quickly rehired by the HTUV as the agency could learn from Walter's more peaceful ways of handling villainy. Hmm. Uh, do you want to go ahead and give your first like? Okay, my first like about this film, uh, I had it and just blanked on me. I I, I didn't write my likes down for some reason. My likes Which is just ironic. Like, yeah, because most of them I do. I just couldn't think of any of them. And most of the time I don't. And this time I did. <laughs> we just swapped. Apparently, it happens. All right. So my first like would actually be the villain, mm-hmm. the the villain killer, Killian. Killian. Thank you. A very the main vil- reason I know it's Killian is because I watch with subtitles on, uh, and I remember looking at going Killian, really, that's a very subtle name. Yeah, very subtle name <laughs> for, for a villain. villain. Uh, the main reason I like this character because be like he's a sympathetic character. Be like he's because his life was ruined because of what Will Smith's character did, mm-hmm. and he is just he's wanting revenge against the the agency of which Will Smith's character is a part of. And you, you feel, because re- you know, I lost my mother, I lost my family, I lost everything, and I lost half of my face and half my body because of something you did. Mm-hmm. And so I just want revenge. Right. And it'd be like, you're really sympathetic to that. And a part of me is like, you, you want him to not succeed, but rather maybe get like one or two hit on mm-hmm. Will Smith's character because Will Smith be like, as it says later during that you, scene, you almost want it to be a Pyrrhic victory for uh, Will Smith. Exactly. Be like, he, he, he gets it off at the very end. But, um, I, I, I found myself almost rooting for the villain because mm-hmm. I just like his, his motivation, uh, his disguise as a will. Be like the the fact be oh he's got this claw hand and his big reveal of his backstory was yeah. just whoa and okay. they hinted that so early on in the they movie they did that there's that uh, this big thing that he was known for is actually the thing that's going to be his downfall yeah very true all right so that even is even though my... we didn't get to see that in the movie no we didn't but anyway either way 
Uh, what is your your first? Look? I absolutely love the fact that they tried to make a James Bond s opening sequence. They did. The song, not so much, yeah. but yeah. Uh, the when the animation for that opening started, I was like, oh, they did not try to do this. <laughs> And they actually do a pretty good job. My favorite part is, uh, is it Lovey? That's the female pigeon? Yeah, Lovey. Yeah. I love how Lovey, they they give her kind of that full sexy silhouette. Jam- silhouettes. <laughs> and she kind of gives you, gives the, the sexy J- uh, James Bond girl eyes that you see in the opening of every James Bond movie. And right. It's like, it's a pigeon. <laughs> this is, anyway. Uh I, I did. You know what the, I'm talking about. Yes. I, I, um, anybody who's watched a James Bond film knows, knows what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, knows exactly what I'm talking about. And, and it's one of those good ones where it hints at what is going to happen in the movie. Oh yeah. Without actually doing it. Mm-hmm. My fa- the the fact that the half of the song goes by and you don't even even have the hint of the pigeon aspect of this film. <laughs> right. I thought, oh, you're just doing a Lance Sterling movie opening that's what you're doing and then they mm-hmm. actually start showing the pigeons and stuff and i go oh my word yeah <laughs> so jacob what's your number two my number two would be the the exploding kitten grenade the first time i saw that it was like okay this is truly mesmerizing it was like yeah. what in the world is going on like it's like time to go boom and just like it blows up with glitter mm-hmm. and pink and everywhere. It's like, what in the world's going on? And it's not an animated cat either. No, it it's is, not. It is, a, it is a video of a real kitten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is weird for the universe, but, you know, yeah. whatever. I, I, I thought it was fascinating how they did that. It was like, mm-hmm. okay. So everybody gets, str- because obviously when everyone sees a little kitten, people stop and be like, oh, it's so cute. Yes. Be like, And it's perfect uh, distraction. It's perfect. It'd be like, well, all of Walter's designs are like the the inflatable hug, the like everything he does. We're like there. It's almost pacifism in a in a, in a way mm-hmm. that deters from violence or hurting people, and I, I enjoy that aspect of it. Um, but his inventions are just in very cool. How they mm-hmm. eventually wind up saving the day at the very end of the movie. Yes. Um, but other than that, it's you know, like. The boys got props. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely when it comes to just, you know, being inventive. Yeah. So, yeah, my number two is the inventions. My number two, I normally don't touch on details like okay. this, but this one impressed me. Okay. Th- when uh, they're falling back to Earth and uh, at the end when he catches, when, uh, yeah, and they kind of hit the ground roughly and uh, Walter kind of, hugs uh lance in his yeah. pigeon form so that he doesn't get hurt yeah and they slide across that tall grass yeah the tall grass is what i'm referring to oh here. yeah that was re- oh my I, word you, here's the thing yeah 3d animation well animation in general but doesn't normally do this but the reason 3d animation doesn't do this is because that is hard to animate that is it is extremely hard to animate i would agree so with you on that chance they would have to not do something like that mm-hmm. they don't do it that's why you also don't see much uh crazy waters things in movies or crazy things with mm-hmm. fire or dust unless Agreed. they absolutely have to do it right you don't normally think of this grass. No. But the thing is, that grass the simulation is like spot on. Uh huh. The way it l- lays down as it goes across it and then springs back up, you can mm-hmm. see every single. I hate to use blade because they're bigger than blades. Yeah. But you know, every single one of those stems lay over and then pop back up. Yeah. Most of the time, when they have grass. In a movie, admittedly, a it's short, mm-hmm. but b it's kind of just a, a just a hard surface that happens to be green. Right. You don't get the idea that that's a soft bit of grass that he's sliding over. Yeah. And I thought, wow, y'all put a lot of work into this one scene that most people won't notice, but the animation nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Like when you uh, said that, I was like, "Oh my gosh, you're right." That was yeah. it is, uh, it's it's a cool thing to see, and it's like, okay, if this is step step one mm-hmm. of that sort of a thing, maybe this coming up more and more. Okay, I can yeah. work with that, but 
it's a weird thing for this movie to have. Agreed. At this one stop. Now, admittedly, it makes sense. This area is overgrown. Mm -hmm. That you can tell this island is not intended to be maintained. It's meant to look like it. There's no one there. Oh yeah. So since you're going to, it would it would look even weirder, I think, for it to have short grass. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this does feel like a weird thing to throw in there mm -hmm. for this. But at the same time, I thought it was, oh, that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Odd decision, but still amazing. <laughs> What's your number three? Uh, my number three is Walter's jump. Mm -hmm. Walter's jump when they are... Um, Sorry. Yeah, when Lance, as the pigeon, and Walter are trying to escape from the uh, enforcement group on top of that skyscraper mm -hmm. it's like oh just jump here and so walter is thinking be like oh kind of like a video game right yeah so parkour he, huh he's gonna do parkour yeah he's doing parkour which parkour actually watching in real life is really really cool yes. to watch and it's really fun to do um you've done parkour i've done parkour okay <laughs> i'm not gonna fight you over that it's just i'm i'm having a hard time visualizing you doing parkour <laughs> When I when I was a bit younger, when I was okay, a bit, young, when I was a bit younger, sense. when I was a bit younger, um, but the 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 whole setup, be like he he visualizes everything, the angles and the whole mm -hmm. bit, and he goes to jump and just pop, yeah, <laughs> it's just pop pop pop. Just it was so it was like I I that was the moment that made me laugh. I was like mm -hmm. okay. You got me sold on Walter. It's this bumbling nerdy guy. He was an outcast who is just, you know, the, the nerdy, so nerd guys who yeah. just, he has a big heart, but he just doesn't know how to, like you said, Vords, the, he's socially awkward. Is, is to the say good, the least. To say the least. is like, I, 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 I've met people like him mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, they definitely pull that off very well. Yeah. So that is my number three. What's yours? Earlier, you mentioned the kitten bomb. Yes. And then I mentioned the grass. Yes. What do these two things have in common in terms of animation? Effects. They are both require the use of heavy particle animation. That is true. Good night. The particle animation in this movie is yeah. good. Yes. Um, agreed. Agreed. So great. I mean, it's a, admittedly every throughout the entire thing, you've got multiple kitten bombs, which all have yeah. glitter involved yeah, with them too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's multiple smoke effects mm -hmm. that happen in here. You've got the grass, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then, of course, you've got different instances. I don't think there's much fire in this one, but there is a lot of water effects. There's a lot of water effects. A lot of water effects, and they look so good for what they are. Agreed. And the other thing, with the because of the glitter, you now have... This is very obvious, much uh, ray tracing style and uh, lighting. True. Which means all those glitter have light, light reflecting going off in all these different ways, and it looks good. It does. I, wow. I am curious uh, on many of these what that processing time was <laughs> to oh. render all those little bitty pieces of foil, uh, <laughs> pink foil. <laughs> Agreed. Um,. It's amazing how well they do they do some of this uh, for what this and like admittedly the story I'll get into this in a minute but this this is not a very complex story I don't think no it's not but the the amount of work they put into it to make it pretty agreed I have to be impressed with and a lot of that is in the particle animation that uh, honestly I don't see much of this with uh, Disney Pixar or DreamWorks mm. as much. They've not I've not seen any of them try something like this recently. Okay. Uh that may that looks maybe a little bit different with Soul because of how they've designed those uh characters. Yeah. Well I take that back. Inside out uh the way they handled the uh the modeling on those characters because That's right, yeah. Because the fuzzy nature of them. Mm -hmm. Uh that's kind of closest but not to the it's not to this level yeah so yeah i got you all uh, right what's your first dislike my first is like uh i did mention it in the the beginning of the show the oh my gosh the eyes in this movie I mean, like, it's it's not as bad as monsters versus aliens mm -hmm. in any shape form or fashion 
but the like like starling has eyes that are big as like watermelons yeah and uh like every character has very large eyes very expressive it eyeball, of, and it's it's distracting it, in a way it kind of feels like they were trying to do more of an anime style right with the eyes right. but they still had too much of, of other things for it to work right yeah so there, there was a lot of the like uh how sterling was designed he was just more like he was built more like a I guess you call it just more. He's built like a very elongated triangle, which mm-hmm. I, I understand the the aesthetic they're trying to go for. Yeah, and I mean, like the the way he moves and all that is really cool. But at the same time, it's kind of an it's very annoying because he doesn't look quite human. Mm-hmm. And so you have a lot of that throughout this film. That I mean, like yeah, they do have a representation of a human being. Yeah, but at the same time, it's more like okay, this is a little off it's a little off-putting in some fashion i'm gonna kind of jump in on this one because my first dislike was specifically lance sterling's human model okay his pigeon model looks good i I really think they put almost all of the design for his character into his pigeon model yeah agreed his human model i know what they're doing to some degree they are trying to exaggerate in many ways will smith's features mm-hmm. without actually drawing Will Smith. Yeah. And it looks weird. It does look weird. It, 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 his face on, on you know, throughout the movie, yeah. I, I mostly remember from the cover, and it's the first thing that stuck out to me mm-hmm. uh, when we first watched that trailer last yeah. year. Uh, it looks weird. It does. It's longer than, I, than almost every other, other... It's There's more vertically... On yeah. his head than there is on anybody else. I it's agree. almost out of proportion. It is. Uh, and his... That uh, goatee mustache combo he's got does not help him in that. Because it actually makes his head look big, uh, it, even more vertical. It does. More long. Mm-hmm. It's weird looking. His features... I know they're trying to go look, make, come up with this suave, debonair, James Bond-like look for the character. But it feels too exaggerated agreed and the reason i'm saying it feels too exaggerated is because almost nobody else is this exaggerated exactly and they're trying to give you show this the they're trying to make sure there's a major major difference yeah. in how he looks as a pigeon versus how he looks as a human yeah here's the thing he's a pigeon make him when he's a human make him look like a human, human. yeah not this weird long-legged long-faced broad-shouldered thing yeah <laughs> Make him look like Black uh, James Bond. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be honest. That's what he's supposed to be. And he kind of looks more like what someone would describe as that. Not the how he would actually it's, it's, look. It's more like an artistic, like ex, almost expressionism in a way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, you know, like you said, it's very elongated yeah. and broad shouldered. Mm-hmm. I, I get, like I, you said, I, I get this, it where they're coming from. I could see this in a, a children's book. Yeah. And if this was based on a children's book, I would let it go. Right. Pardon the reference. But because this is based on an animated short, which admittedly I haven't seen, I don't even know if you see his human form in the anime, in the, in that short, but it really, it doesn't, if his his character model doesn't seem to fit the world. Right. And the eyes, like you said, do not help. No, they don't. And everyone's eyes have this problem. Yeah, agreed. Like I like I said earlier, they feel like anime eyes in a Western cartoon's body. Very true. It's weird. Anyway, that second is true. Dislike. All right. Unless you got more to add to. Uh, question. no, I don't. Actually. I interrupted. No, you're good. Um, my number two would be for for some reason I always get stuck on animation when it comes to films. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's fine. That's what we're here for. Exactly. Um, I. The other pigeons, the other pigeons, be like, <laughs> lo- like lovely was be lovely like, he looked fine. Yeah, lovely was fine. Be like, mm-hmm. great. The two others just disturbed me beyond belief. Definitely the tall, disgusting one who had everything that on him. Kept eating everything. Yeah, exactly. Be like, I understand pigeons eat things. Yeah, but pigeons don't eat everything. They're not a like a and pig they, or a dog or and something. They like that. normally don't look like they just got run over by a. 
a, a, a marching band. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mar- and and somehow lived to tell the tale. Exactly. The uh, especially not after a couple days. Yeah, it, it's so weird because like he he eats that what I'm gonna call a neutralizer. Yeah, it's kind of like, what it looked like. Yeah, it's like he like he swallows that. It's like okay and. Then he becomes more part of the story, but at the same time, be like you're just trying to make this character into more of the story, All right. and instead of the side character, he really is because he's just a member of the flock that you've made look weird. Yeah, exactly. It'd the be same like, is true with the other one, which I, I think he was just fat. Yeah, he was just a big bird. Yeah, it's like okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just okay. the yeah. Guess we're good. No, you're good. The uh, just the fact that they kept bringing those two up. Like, Lovely, I totally get. She is mm-hmm. so smitten with uh, Sterling. It's, I mean, funny. Yes. I, I, was, I was halfway expecting them to turn Lovely into a human. Thank some you. Point. I'm not the only one who was thinking that. Because <laughs> that, that's my thinking, thought was. Oh, my I, gosh. I, I she'd be a cool kept human. I thinking he's, he's going to drink it, but uh, somehow in that process, he's going to drop and like some of it's gonna fall out and she's gonna find it drink it and she's gonna wake up as a human yeah but still pigeon because she because she's a pigeon she is a pigeon and yeah. she won't be able to speak human yeah that'll be weird that would thankfully be... they did not do this <laughs> that would have been weird but that, that was my first notion i was like okay when's this gonna happen but it didn't because yeah, you half expect it to it feels like that's where it's leading and thankfully they don't go there yeah so i mean like if if, if you're gonna make a sidekick character Make them likable. Well, these these two mm-hmm. other characters are not likable. Be like they're just really annoying. You know, I understand they're more comedy relief, but yes. they're they're not they're not likable. That be like and the, for the most part they're forgettable. They are forgettable. They are forgettable. Now, if you, it, it's kind of like what they did with Hey Hey in uh, uh, Mulana. Be like Mo- you, Moana. Yeah, Moana. I swear it sounded like you said Mulana. Mulana. <laughs> okay, um, Moana. Um, uh, that originally they were going to do the pit, the little pig. I can't remember his name in the second, but, uh, I was like, okay, that be, a, that's going to be a great character. Mm-hmm. But and then, then angry chicken. Yeah. Then angry chicken. That would have been perfect, but no, they made, Hey, Hey, the main sidekick. And it's just part of my French, but a dumb chicken. Yeah. That I, I was, I was halfway expecting to see, um, our Dwayne Johnson's character. Uh, Maui? Maui. Yeah, Maui. I was halfway expecting me like, because when Maui said, be like, cook him. Yes, cook yes. the stupid bird. Eat him, yes. please. Yes. <laughs> Hawaiian fried chicken. Yes. Yes. I mean, I know that's terrible to say, but I was so hoping he would just be done and gone. But the the same way these two other sidekick pigeons, it's like they just keep getting thrust into the story. And they can do nothing to help the yeah, story. Ex- except for our, our long-legged, you know, disgusting little disgusting pigeon. one happens to eat something and they continue somehow to be able to use it after he's eaten it because they just hit him against things so it does what they, what they yeah, want exactly. to do. Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, it's, it's a Day X no, Machina character. No, please don't do that. Yeah, no, please, no. Anyway. Either way. So, yeah, it was the, the almost useless side characters. Mm-hmm. What is your number, Dos? This movie taught me more about pigeons than I really wanted to know. True. Primarily one particular aspect of pigeon anatomy. Mm. Mm. Now, we are a very we were a clean show and we right. try not to use poop and other things. Which this movie talks about a lot. <laughs> yes, entirely too much. Yeah. It's what I used to hear being called bathroom humor. Yeah. I do not need to know about a pigeon's cloaca. Is all I'm saying. No. And I'm not going to tell for for anyone any kids who happen to be overhearing this, you ain't going to learn it from me what that is. Yeah. But um I did not need to know. No. I did not Good need night. to know. No. About uh, that. Uh. Oh, I would have been perfectly happy being ignorant. <laughs> also the fact that because the DNA was of the pigeon was from Lovey, apparently in pigeon <laughs> form, he, uh, Lance is not a guy. <laughs> He's a female. It's like, why? That was so awkward. It was like, it's what? Au- it's awkward. And once again, the only thing it adds is, oh, okay. Uh, they, uh, that's why the antidote didn't work. Yeah. 
okay, here's a wild idea. If the one that turned it required a, fle- a, a uh, feather from Lovey, why wouldn't the antidote require a feather from Lovey too? Uh. You've got to make it's you're reversing the same effects. Right. Anyway, um, yeah, I just I don't like that aspect of the no. movie. It's like don't, don't get me wrong, Bill. I I love it when movies give you information you didn't know before. Right. But not when, like this. When you go overboard with it, mm-hmm. and understand like. Uh, Tom Holland's character, yeah, be like it's just knows every for some reason knows everything about pigeons. Yes, and here's the thing: the first time they make that joke, and if they had made the joke and then stopped there, oh yeah, I wouldn't care as much. Yeah, it but would have just been going. a passing joke, much like, uh, dude, I can see your face in my butt at the same time. Yeah, that was a funny joke. That was, and they never repeated it. Thankfully, yeah, they repeat this cloaca joke. Three times. Mm. Or at least they bring it back up. And it's like, stop. Yes. Please. Yes. This has nothing to do with any of my prudish tendencies. This is not a funny joke. <laughs> and I'm tired of hearing about it. You know, I understand being like, it's, it's, you know, little kids like potty humor and that kind of stuff. I get that. Uh, no, but, that but they went this, way overboard with it. The, oh, I don't... I'm, I'm having to be very careful about what I say because right. of the nature of our show. Uh, in fact, this is, feels like similar to when we were talking about the Little Mermaid and describing her shells. Right. <laughs> uh, but it felt like every time they were talking about the cloaca, it felt like they were talking about those parts on us. Because they were. They were. They were talking but because about they were using the scientific term that is not technically against social norms right they could get away with saying it multiple times i honestly don't feel that 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 just because it's technically not against not a word you can use in public right i don't think that means you should yeah it's true especially when it's very much anyway yeah moving on right wow what is your third my 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 third dislike the the old cliche that I've got to do all of this by myself. Ah yes, the Le- Lego Batman syndrome. Lego Batman syndrome. Every even be- sends him away. Yeah, even yeah. Sends even them sends him away. away. That 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 whole like I, I get it. It's an old it's an old trope in which has been used very effectively throughout many 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 films, stories, what have you. It's it's not used effectively here. No, it's not. Because you see it coming from five miles away. <laughs> that is true. You, I mean, like, you get this, be like, these two characters bond and be like, oh, I'm sending them away, but it's no, I, I do, I'm, I'm a solo, I'm a solo act. And like, mm-hmm. really? Well, and that's the thing. It didn't even feel, here, okay, looking back at Lego Batman, admittedly, yeah. that one, he was wearing his emotions on his cowl. Yeah. But uh, in that one, at the very least, it felt like he was act- he, he he pretty much was telling them, "I can't lose you, people. I can't lose more people that I love." Yeah, that's why I'm sending you away. Yeah, that makes sense. In this movie, he says, "Okay, now I'm human again. I ought to be able to be fine. You can go ahead and go on home, Walter. Right. I don't need you anymore." Yeah, and it's not. The- and while you kind of can tell, maybe in this, it, it feels more like projecting. Mm -hmm. He projecting onto the character to say he was sending him away so he wouldn't get hurt Mm -hmm. because he knew Walter was not the kind of, he was not trained for the stuff Lance Sterling was trained for. He's not really designed to do it, despite the fact he's been doing it the whole movie. True. But this really felt more, it it felt like, it's like, no, I'm doing this because I'm a solo act. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm no longer a pigeon, I'm no longer hampered, I'm going to be awesome again. Yeah. No. You're not. Especially since you haven't quite gotten t- t- uh, gotten rid of all the pigeon tendencies. <laughs> that is true. That, that was that was funny, but at the same time, be like really. It was, all, it was also they only did two things. It was made, made you just look and go, okay, he's still th- he's still part pigeon. Mm-hmm. And I honestly thought when I was looking at, that, I was like, oh, the antidote didn't take. It's gonna ba- it's about to change him back when he least expects it. Uh huh. No, he just has habits bird tendencies bird tendencies mm. yes he can't see his reflection in a glass and he can't uh, he when he walks he has to do the little pigeon 
thing with his head. Maybe. Yeah, so... For no reason. No reason whatsoever. Just to make it more funny, which is understandable. But, yeah, just the be like, I'm, I'm a solo act. It's like, can't you do something different? You know, be like, it's like, yeah, Jam- you, James be, Bond. Can you um, please be a three-dimensional character? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I understand. You like, had what, growth, and you lost it when you became human exactly, again. Exactly. Exactly. You had all that development. Be like, oh, I can learn to trust people. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm a human again, they're like, oh, I've lost. I'd be like, I've forgotten all of this stuff until the very end of the film. Right. And that's the thing is if he literally... Th- had a uh, what? What would I call it? A relapse into yeah. his old behaviors. Now that he was human again, yeah, and realized when everything was going wrong, it's like, oh crap, I was wrong. I am not this. I really do need Walter's help. Yeah, I would live with it. Yeah, I wouldn't like it, but I'd live with it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't realize he needs Walter's help till Walter is back and has helped him. That is true. He doesn't realize. Now, admittedly, he does break down when he sees Walter's boat get blown up and he thinks yeah. he's on it. So, at the very least, there that takes that projection problem I had right. away. Mm-hmm. But it still feels like a 180 degree turn every five seconds. Yeah, that's true. That is so true. Mm-hmm. Anyway, All I right. keep interrupting. What you. is your number three? This movie's story is so stinking shallow. Agreed. I mean, you could walk across this without getting your ankles wet. It's so shallow. <laughs> uh, granted, I know it's a kid's movie. Right. And they Dude. are aiming more at a kid's audience than uh, some others. Right. And I, uh, we are all, all spoiled with Pixar and DreamWorks. Right. And Disney, for that matter. Yeah. Where they not only write stuff in for the kids, right. but they write stuff in for the adults who are watching too. Yeah. This is not that kind of movie. No. This is very much, we're writing this for the kids. We're sorry, adults, that you have to sit through this. Yeah. That is kind of how it feels. Because as an adult, I saw so much of the where this plot was going as it was coming. I, um, most of the jokes did feel like they were there to make kids laugh. Yeah. But not to make adults laugh. Yeah. Half the voices don't even sound like they're trying to hide who they are, try to really reflect the character they're supposed to be because Agreed. immediately you turn this on. Oh, look, that's Reba McIntyre. Oh, look, that's Karen Gillan. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming DJ Khalid is, sounds oh, just he, like he, he doesn't. He know, sounds like DJ Khalid. The only character... I mean, Will Smith sounds like Will Smith. Yeah. I mean, admittedly, I could pro- I don't think Will Smith really has a different voice he could use, but yeah. Tom- that's not how he acts. Yeah, Tom Holland sounds Tom like... Tom Holland... Sounds like Peter Parker Spider-Man. He does, but the weird thing is, at least, I was able to make that separation from the actor with him. That is true. You Ever could since Tom not- Holland's British. <laughs> right. And he's tr- doing an American accent in this one. I mean, he's doing an American accent in Peter Par- as Peter Parker, but true. it's a different... It's a different accent. Yeah, it's slightly different. Slightly different. So I can at least go... I can at least, when I hear that voice, I'm thinking, oh, that's Walter speaking, not Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. But when I hear Lance speak, oh, it's Will Smith. Yeah. When I hear the Chief speak, oh, that's Reba. Mm Mm-hmm. When I hear uh, Eyes speak, oh, that's Amy Pond. Yeah. Because I knew her from Doctor Who first. Uh, And obviously she's not Nebula in that because Nebula's angry. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Uh, or uh, for that matter, uh, I don't. I have not watched Parks and Rec, but Me I either. know that actress um, that plays Marcy is. I, I recognize her her voice right off the top, right. right off the bat too, because I've I've seen stuff related to that, and I've seen her in other things. They all feel like they were just playing themselves. Yeah, that happened to be in this environment. That is not acting. That is true. It's more they're saying lines, and the lines make sense with what the animation is doing. Yeah, but they're not acting. Yeah, they're, they're and not getting I to the character. I know all of these actors and actresses can act. Oh yeah, all of them can. I've heard it. I've watched it. I've seen it. They're not doing it here. No, it feels they're like, not. It feels like they're just speaking into a microphone, 
with the motion they've been told to portray, and that's all they're doing. Pretty much. That's, and the story, like I said, is just so shallow. It's, you could, it's it's just shallow. And right. I just don't, I don't understand why you write a story this shallow. <laughs> One of the movies that I've been meaning to get on that on the list that okay. I haven't yet that you I know you don't like. Okay. Is cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Yep. Granted, that story yeah. is also shallow. It is shallow, but it's shallow in a way that I that is enjoyable. Right. This is not. Yeah, agree. That's what I'm trying to get at. Oh, okay, I got you. I totally get. I totally get yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that brings me to the ends. Okay. You have anything to add before we get into our ratings? Uh, no. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and give my rating a five. Okay. It's the middle of the road. It does a lot of amazing things that get that give. I have to give it props for. Yeah. Especially with the animation. But, 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 but there's so much that I, I can't stand by the way this movie <laughs> does it. True. Uh, I'm going to be honest about halfway through the movie. I realized I wasn't watching the movie. I was on my phone. Phone. Mm-hmm. That is the biggest condemnation. I think you can give a movie. Oh yeah. Is when it does not hold your attention. True. When you have no reason to not give it attention. True. I'm not sure this would have held my attention in the movie theater. Yeah. I don't know this for certain because I tend to pay more attention to movie theater than I do at home anyway, but this is as amazing as some of this was as pretty as a lot of this was to look at. I felt like it was just there. Yeah. It was okay in on average. It's not something I want to put it's not a disc I want to put in that PlayStation 4 over there again. Gotcha. And I'm probably going to sell the disc off and get some money back. Okay. Even though I didn't get that much on it. But still, um, it's not something I want to keep in my collection. Agreed. Agreed and, with you on that. Uh, yeah, five stars. Yeah. You know, kind, kind of not the same. stars. We're not doing stars. No, wrong Wrong podcast. show. I'm giving it a 5.0. Okay. Okay. Um, Kind of in that, that same breath, be like, I watched uh, Ferdinand mm-hmm. for the first time. And I still haven't seen that. No, it's it's actually, it's the story is very good. Mm-hmm. The, story is, the animation's very well done. And uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get into that when we get to that movie. Um, but I think Ferdinand had a better execution than Spies in the Skies. Mm-hmm. Like, far better. Far better. Be like, one, the, the, the characters were more relatable. Be like, where... The, like the story execution was much better. Mm-hmm. Where in this one, be like, yeah, you were almost rooting for the villain in this film, which the the villain was the like the big key point of this film for me. I was like, okay, I like the villain. I'm not a fan of the the hero or mm-hmm. be like, I like Tom Tom Holland's character a little bit, a little bit. I like his inventiveness, that kind of stuff. But overall, it's not a very good movie. Be like it's it's got some great animation in it. It's got be like the the jokes are way just be like okay why are we going this slow with this yeah and understand it's a children's movie but at the same time we don't need to go this slow mm-hmm. at all. It, it w- was saying that with 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 all of that in mind, I would probably give it more of a I would give it a six. I would give it a six. For the simple fact, be like it has such an impel- compelling antagonist. So mm-hmm. vi- now, granted, the way he executes things, not so much. But his character, his motivations, everything, I enjoy that. the The animation, like you said, the grass, the I love the lighting particles, everything was so incredibly well done. Story, not so much. Characters, meh. so give it a six. Uh, it's one of those movies. Maybe it's like okay, if you haven't seen the movie, watch it. Give it'll be like gain your own um, gain your own opinion about the film, mm-hmm. and come you know come to your own conclusion. And to me, it's it's an okay film. Like like you said, I'll probably never watch it again, and unless be like I'm forced to watch it or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just. It's not a good, it's not a great film. It's got great 
stuff around the film, but it's right. just, it's just not a very good film. Mm-hmm. So a six. All right. That brings us to the end of another episode, which means we need to roll mm-hmm. the dice for our next movie. Uh, let me bring that up. So we have just a couple movies. Or actually, we just have one movie left before we start going through our October, mm-hmm. which is going to be Halloween month. So let's just to go over what's on the dice right now. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, at number one, My Hero Academia, Two Heroes. Number two, King's Glaive, Final Fantasy XV. Mm-hmm. Number three, Hercules. Number four, Scoob. Number five, Batman versus Two Face. And what do we got at number six, Jacob? Well, we have a number six. Uh, it's a more recent film. It's called Paramore. It's from Paramore or Promare. 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 I'm sorry. Promare. Promare is from Studio Trigger. Uh, it's an anime, and I rented it because I was like, I really want to watch this film. Mm-hmm. I rented it. Well, let's just say it's a Trigger film. If you know what I'm talking about, you totally get it. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, when we get around to it, you'll totally understand because we is... highly recommend to watch the film and you know listen to our review. All so right. yes, Promare. Okay. Since this was your movie, mm-hmm. I get to roll. Yes. Again. <laughs> Four rolls don't count. No. Four. Four. Scoob. Ruby Dooby Doo! Which makes the quickest turnaround (laughs) from reaction to full review. Yes. Actually, first turnaround. Yes. From from reaction to review. review. All right. That we've actually done. So join us next week for uh, Hanna Barbera's Avengers. Pretty much. All right, so join us next time for that. Right. <laughs> Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? The same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast. Oh, boy. So where can they find you, Jacob? They can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron and Jacob's Daily Art Corner, my personal art Facebook page. On Twitter at Jacob B. Heron. On Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. And on Letterbox at Jacob Heron. Where can they find you, Drew? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. You can also find my Facebook page at Drew's Photo Bin, where I upload uh, my photography. You can also follow me on Letterbox at GGeorge759 and Twitter at GGeorge759. Where can they find us, Jacob? You can also visit our website, the Cellcast podbean.com where you will find every episode we released and links to listen to it on apple Podcasts, google play and stitcher our rss feed if we aren't in your favorite podcast app directory please share review and subscribe to us there and share us with your friends you will also find a link to our facebook group the double feature podcast community where we talk about both animated and live-action movies. We share this with our other podcasts, which we do with Jacob's brother Jim, at uh, the Movie of the Week podcast, where we talk about live-action movies. You can also email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. Also, please like our page on Facebook. We try to post about upcoming movies. If you comment on that movie's post before we record, we'll read your comments in the episode. And remember, every time we say the cell cast, that is with a single L. L.